Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Last semester, I dropped a how I got Google video. I'll link it here that you guys seem to like. So I thought I'd drop another recruiting video during the actual recruiting season for the people out there that are actively recruiting. As you probably know, if you're watching this, the CS market has become more and more oversaturated since 2022. Market oversaturation happens because more and more students are choosing to study CS. Simultaneously, more and more companies are using AI that's getting better and better. So they're hiring less and less developers. That will naturally drive you to do side projects, apply early, and practice lead code. I'm going to break this video down into three sections. One, how to stand out when applying. Two, how to conquer your interviews. And three, how to navigate the whole tech space and even create opportunities for yourself. Let's talk about how to actually stand out from the pile of thousands of other applications um, that a recruiter sees. People always ask me, do referrals actually matter? How important are side projects? So in this section, I'm going to break down my anecdotal experiences on those matters. Okay, firstly, in my experience, the most important aspects of standing out in your application is one how early you apply two how much your resume and profile actually fits the job description and three a little bit of luck for CS, referrals help, but I wouldn't over-index on referrals. In fact, I would say always choose applying early over waiting for a referral and applying later. I cannot emphasize this enough. There is nothing more important than applying within three hours of the job dropping in order to stand out. After 24 hours, you will be the 1,000th person in line. Okay, you might be wondering how. Well, I recommend this Chrome extension called Simplify. I talked about it in my last video, but it basically is a Chrome extension that helps you fill out your applications faster. They also have a GitHub repo, which is associated with Simplify and some other adjacent similar repos that show lists of job applications as they come out. These are really useful for staying on top of which jobs are coming out. Secondly, your resume and how well your profile actually fits the job description also is really important. Now, obviously the best case scenario is having previous job or internship experience that directly lines up with what you're applying to. But in many cases, this isn't always the case. And so side projects are also really, really helpful. You can often supplement with side projects. And nowadays with AI, side projects are actually a lot easier than you may think. Take any role you're interested in and then you can spend maybe four hours and create a side project that's really relevant to not only that role, but all roles that are kind of in that general category. You might wanna check out this video I made recently about how to code side projects while you're in school. This is super helpful because as a student, like and with recruiting, there is a lot on your plate. It also really helps to have one spike in CS that you're really interested in, and then also have a lot of experience in. So for example, full stack engineering, back end, front end, machine learning systems, it could be anything of that nature, but it just really helps you have a spike and stand out compared to the rest of the applicants. And obviously you wanna be applying to roles that fit your spike. Those are gonna be the ones where you stand out the most. But none of your experience matters if your resume is bad and doesn't showcase it well. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you here how to create a good resume that passes ATS. The most important thing is that your resume's text is selectable, which means it's gonna be readable by the system. Um, and to go a step further, one resume template that's really great that all my friends and I use is Jake's resume. This is a LaTeX template, which uh, basically has a skeleton for you to put in your own experiences. And now I'm gonna break down my resume so you can take a look at what got me Google and also what I'm recruiting with this year that's been pretty successful. Okay, so I'm gonna put my resume up here on the screen. As you can see, it is filled to the brink or to the brim. If I even put one more line here, it's gonna overflow to the next page. So you wanna basically put as much stuff as you can in your resume. This is your chance to showcase everything that you have done. And yeah, my strategy here, my sections, I have my education up top um, and then my experiences and then side projects and my technical skills. Now what I'm doing here is I'm highlighting keywords. These are what the ATS screen and what the recruiter are gonna be looking for. And I also just bold all my keywords so that if a recruiter is reading, they can quickly identify what it is that I can actually bring to the table. Yeah, so I, I bold the words I know they wanna see. So like, for example, Python, TypeScript, SQL, um, React, I bold all those words that I, I know they're looking for. Okay, final thing is graduation year. It's well known that companies tend to recruit uh, rising seniors because they want people that can return full-time after their internship. Um, and so basically what this means is that if you are planning on graduating a year early, then you shouldn't be afraid to put your early graduation date because it might help you uh, land an internship. Okay, so you stood out as an applicant and now you've been invited to the either the phone interview, the online assessment, or the technical interview. Let's talk about how you're gonna crush those and what you should look out for. My tip for the online assessment, frankly, is to just practice a lot of lead code. These online assessments usually consist of two to maybe up to four 
leak code questions within a set time frame. And these questions can range from data structures and algorithm questions to more class design over the course of a few sub questions that build up. Now, either way, you're gonna want to practice leak code for this. And what's good is leak code is hosting a Black Friday sale. Um, and you can use my link in the description to help me out. You'll get 40% off or whatever um, for their sale. But I genuinely, I mean, leak code is the method. So, um, and as you do more OAs, you will also get better at them. Uh, but yeah, my number one tip is just practice, just practice. Okay, let's say you pass the OA, or in some cases there is no OA, and you move on to what's called the phone interview. This is usually refers to a behavioral interview where a non-technical recruiter will call you up on the phone and ask you some behavioral questions to assess your technical and behavioral fit at the company. Now, my number one tip for these behavioral interviews is to practice what's called the STAR method. This stands for situation, task, action, result. And it's a framework that you can use to break down your answers to behavioral questions. So just make sure you know your resume front and back. Everything on there is fair game, so don't lie. Make sure you put stuff that you can actually back up um, on your resume and then just be prepared to talk about it. Normally these interviews are pretty chill if you know your stuff about yourself um, and always have a few questions to ask the recruiter about the company. I like to ask what brought them there and what has made them stay. Let's say everything went well. You get a glorious email that blesses your inbox saying that you are invited to interview with the company. Um, how can you take it from there and conquer your interview? Okay, first, in terms of scheduling your interview, you wanna make sure that you're prepared, obviously, but you don't want to schedule it too far in the future because it looks like that you're not that interested. I recommend scheduling it within one to 1.5 weeks, no later, um, and earlier is better if you feel prepared. Once you put that thing on the calendar, it's time to grind. Grind out lead code, grind out mock interviews, um, and some, some companies on the bigger tech side have a lead code list that has a list of questions that are commonly asked for interviews at that company. I would just do all those questions or as many as you can. Now, if you're more of a beginner on lead code, then I have a roadmap for you to just blaze to getting really good at solving problems. Lead code is just a pattern matching game at the end of the day. It's a way for interviewers to see if you're relatively smart enough to match patterns, and are hardworking enough to put into practice. If you don't have a language that you particularly are really, really good at, I would just go with Python um, for interviews. It's the best language for interviews because it's really short, um, concise, easy to write, and translates naturally from algorithm to code. Yeah, so now you should go through the Need Code 150. It's a list of 150 Lead Code questions compiled by a guy named Mr. Lead Code. Uh, he's my goat. And um, it touches pretty much every single subject that you could possibly be tested on in an actual lead code style interview. Now, this is the fastest way to get interview ready. Me personally, I have done around 330 lead code questions. And I'd say around the 200 uh, lead code question mark is where I felt a shift from feeling like not so prepared to feeling like I could take on any medium question that was thrown in my direction. So truly lead code is a matter of practice and it's a matter of just hard work. So I would figure out how you can maximize enjoyment out of the lead code process. It sounds weird, but learning to enjoy learning how to do the problems uh, is the best way to trick yourself into enjoying the process and is also how you're gonna get through the most lead code questions. Take it from me, I did 200 lead code questions in two weeks back in January when I had to interview for Google. And I think that's the only reason why I was able to pass my interviews and is also helped me out so much this year because I don't have to study as much since I've kind of already digested a lot of these problems before. Now, when you're lead coding for long periods of time, the most important thing is enjoying the process. And one thing that makes a process suck is sitting in a crappy chair for five hours at a time. Luckily, FlexiSpot recently sent me their Ergo X ergonomic office chair that has been an absolute game changer for coding and comfort. It comes with this cushion that makes my butt feel like it's in heaven, pause, um, and I just really enjoy sitting in it for long periods of time. It has like a 5D lumbar support, 7D armrest, and 4D headrest. And it supports up to 551 pounds if you're built like that. Now compared to my college dorm chair, the Ergo X is just so much more comfortable and it actually makes me want to sit down at my desk and just start coding, start studying, um, or even just start chilling um, for anything like just Love this chair, sitting down feels so much better. And one kind of niche thing that's been actually really changing how I work is the ability to recline on this chair. Now, basically before I would just, if I wanted to doom scroll, I low key would start doom scrolling at my desk. But with this chair, I just recline, put the footrest out, scroll a little bit, and then when I'm ready to lock back in, I sit up straight. Now, this sounds like random, but it's important because uh, it makes me not associate sitting up straight with doom scrolling. So 
When I'm sitting up straight on my computer, my brain knows that it's time to focus. And when I lean back, my brain knows that it's okay to relax. And so this kind of adds another dimension to my environment where I can train myself to focus when necessary. I just feel less of an urge to get distracted uh, when I'm working at my desk. So it's been a really big game changer, even though it's not the craziest feature. Thank you so much to FlexiSwap for sending me this chair. They're actually doing a Black Friday sale right now. So if you use the link in my description, then it also supports me um, and you get a nice discount on the chair um, or whatever other product they're doing right now because everything's on sale. So go ahead and take a look. During the interview itself, it's all about mindset. Okay, you have to come in with the idea that the interviewer is your collaborator. There's someone that you should be asking questions to and working with to solve the problem. Code slowly, communicate clearly, and make sure that you always check up with the interviewer if you're on the right track. One of the most common misconceptions with interviews is that an interview is just a lead code problem with someone else watching you. That is not true at all. An interview is a test of how well you can collaborate with others on your code. And so the interviewer is your collaborator. You wanna be asking them clarifying questions constantly and you also constantly want to be checking in with them on how you're doing. They're there to give you hints. And honestly, these hints have saved my interviews in the past and you should always take them. Um, so make sure you come into the interview with a open mind, calm, and most importantly, uh, in a talkative mood to collaborate with your interviewer and know that this is not just a sit down silent grind session. This is a collaboration test. Okay, most of the tips I just gave were um, for big tech recruitment, but there's also a lot of opportunity to be found in the startup space. Uh, and it's honestly mostly overlooked. This is because startups do not have the resources to hire recruiters to go and find candidates like you um, or to post their jobs on you know places and get a lot of uh, traction. But this is a great opportunity for CS students like you to make opportunities for themselves and honestly uh, learn a lot more because at startups you get more priority and more ownership over the projects that you work on and so you will learn a lot more. Startup interviewing is definitely not as clear cut as big tech. The opportunities are out there but not clearly available so it's really up to you to dig them out. I would start by going to portfolio companies of famous VC. I would say for startups, a lot of it is your own initiative. I would start by looking online for startups that you can reach out to to find these opportunities yourself. Now, I would start by going on LinkedIn um, and going on the websites of different venture capital firms such as um, A16Z, uh, Comma, Contrary, um, YC, Kleiner Perkins, Sequoia, Excel, so many more and look through all their portfolio companies. Those companies are gonna be startup companies in various stages that are usually looking to hire. Uh, and you can go ahead and make an introduction yourself, reach out to the CEO, an investor, or just someone on the team, and basically demonstrate your interest in the company. Um, and this is a great way to create opportunities where before, there might not have been any before you sent that email. Now, the actual technical interviews themselves for startups are also slightly different. They'll still test data structures and algorithms, but they'll usually be more open-ended because they're testing how you approach a big problem. And it also really depends on what the startup is working on. A lot of times, it won't be data structures anymore. It might be more systems or more ML or something else depending on what your kind of offering you can do and also what the startup itself is interested in. Now, some other tips to go the extra mile. Maintain an online presence, either on Twitter or LinkedIn, where you show off what you're building. Uh, this is great for attracting attention and getting people to reach out to you um, when they're looking for someone that they want to take on. It also makes it easier for people to validate uh, what you're working on and you know your, that your technical skills are sharp because you're not afraid to post what you're working on in public. Uh, so yeah, my, my tip is build in public if you want to get seen by startups and sometimes it might even lead to big tech internships. That's all I have for today. I hope it was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all on the process and I'll make sure to answer. And then also let me know if you guys want to see more vlog style content or if you want to see more tutorials like this one. Um, if you made it this far, thank you so much. Comment some like banana emoji in the comments or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, see you guys. Bye.